Hi everyone, welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. I think this is part 12 now. Um, you know, I definitely had something to say here. All right, cool. I just loaded it and got the item I wanted. <laughs> Jeez, uh, I just woke up. I just had breakfast. Um, it's like nine in the morning. Yeah, it's a hot nine in the morning. Heck yeah. All right. Yeah, I just woke up. It's almost 10, actually. The manila folder that doesn't have any information on 37, on who 37 is or where he came from, but outlines the plans for him. They're not pretty, and neither will 37 be when they're finished. All right, cool. Um... Yeah, all right. Oh, whoops. So, um, yes, as I was saying, I just woke up. You pass the folder through the barred window, and here 37 flip through the pages. Let's see here. Scalectomy, squidoplasty, complete skinectomy, replace with nipples, verify available quantity. What the crap? I've got to get out of here. Anything I can do to help? Got a basic outline on plan. First, I need a way to distract the guard. There's a crazy thing they call a basic outline, although they keep in the first level of the menagerie. Saw them bring one of those and a weird looking object that teleported one of the scientists away. Can you get me one? All right, cool. So um, I just had breakfast with my cat. Uh, he go to. <laughs> Goto is a programming language instruction designed to shunt the program into a different part of the code. You don't know where this particular one directs to, or what will happen if you use it on a particular creature, or how this is useful in the slightest bit possible, but it might be fun to find out. Let's do Escape from Combat without spending an adventure, maybe. Alright, cool. He passed the Goto through the window in 37 things. Next, we need a break, way to break open this barred window. A muscular beast called a Weremoose, several of them locked up on level 2. My guess is if they're true lycanthropes to be able to grant me their power on a temporary basis with some of their spit. I'll need you to bring me some. That's really gross. Yeah, it is. Yeah, sorry, but any port in a storm, right? Oh, geez. Well, at least I'm on the right track for levels and stuff. Um, I had some cereal and uh, some leftover cake because I'm awful. Yeah. Weremoose. We got weremoose spit. As you know, the bite of a whatever, a were whatever, can inflect you with a particular virant of lycanthropy. This is because being a lycanthrope is kind of a pain in the ass and tends to make one a bit spiteful. Oh, sure, one might say. Point and laugh at the pathetic were slaw. I'll see how you like it, buddy. I forgot the point I was trying to make, but this is the bottle of a spit of a were moose you beat up. Gives you lycanthropy, eh, for 20 adventurers. Uh, plus mu muscle and moxie, 10%. I'm actually going to sit here and finish my story. Um... And I was like, you know, I haven't recorded Kingdom of Loathing in a couple days. And I forgot everything that I was doing. I set up my recording and it worked all right. And so I was like, yeah, let's go in. Um, and I completely just forgot that I had to <laughs> be on camera and talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, hi everyone, I'm Alfred. Uh, I'm playing Kingdom of Loathing again. This is part 12, I believe. Um, I just recorded, let me check and see what is actually going to go up. Am I still recording on this? Okay, cool. I don't want you to see what's going on. The last episode... Okay, so... You just saw... Reach episode 6. And Pokemon Uranium started posting. Yeah! Um, I know I talked about it in the... In the video itself, but um, I'm not a huge Pokemon fan. I do like RPGs, though. Okay, cool. I do like RPGs, as evidenced by my playing of this. Um, I had a point there, I forgot. You pass the vial of werewolf spit through the window. Great, 37 says. Perfect. Just need one more thing. When I break open, I need help getting through it. It's a tight squeeze, so I need some heavy-duty lube. Big fat guy's locked up in the third level. Some blubber should do the trick. That's even grosser than the werewolf spit. That's the last thing I need, I promise. I'm going to already have that. Yeah, we did. You hand 37 the glob of abominable butter. Oh, my cat's poking around by my toes. Um, yeah, he's just underneath my desk. He's looking around at everything. 
Like he's looking up at the underside of my desk like he's never seen that before. He might not have. Of course, I'm the only one who can see this. <laughs> UN-37, the, bob of, the glob of abominable blubber. Wow, he says. This stuff is really gross. That should do it. Keep it on the corridor. You look around the corner and hear a strange noise. It sounds a bit like... And you hear a guard say, hey, what the... And then there's a bit of zoop noise and the sound of running feet fades in the distance. Look in this, you go back to the sound, look around, but it's empty. 37 made his escape. That's a good deed for the day. No response. What happens if we actually go through all these? Oh, we got muscle. Grass on muscle. All right. Um, well, that's definitely a quest line completed. Cool. That's a yeah, that's all all I needed to do. Thrust smack. It's all in the mind. And in the face of your opponent who just took a bunch of damage. Nice. Um So yeah, that's that's everything there. Um now we just need oh, we can we can get we can go through the curb to some more. We've only got these two left. So I have a symbiosis with my cat. Uh I uh allow him to drink the milk out of my cereal bowl when I'm done with it. I don't eat sugared cereals because he doesn't eat any sugar. And neither do I. Oh shoot, I didn't even read that. As you end the conjoined zombie, z z z zombies conjoined lives for the second times, your evilometer emits a loud beep. I was thinking about my cat. Damn it. I mean, dang it. All right. I'm trying to not swear in my Pokemon Uranium, and uh, it's kind of throwing me off. You open the huge coffin and see a disturbing sight. A Zamambi. More accurately, a pair of conjoined Zamambis. Considering the odds of conjoined twins surviving to adulthood and the odds of spontaneous or deliberate Zamambification, this must be the rarest thing in the world. We already said it's definitely shambling toward you to eat your brainiest thing in the world, so you should uh, probably get ready for a fight. It jumps on your frontal and parietal lobes simultaneously. <laughs> you forget your piano lessons as a kid and your first familiar. It grabs you and munches on your shin and arse at the same time. Youch. It bangs both of its heads against yours. See the eight heads joke in the bat hole for more information. It sets it with both mouths. It doesn't hurt physically, but it hurts your feelings. It splits into two fully formed Zmobis. Uh, each of which takes to monkey on hemispheres in your brain. You find yourself less creative and analytical simultaneously. It tries to bunch your forehead with both mouths, but accidentally bangs its heads together. It tries to bang its heads against yours, but you're a better head banger than head bangy. It claws you with its filthy, filthy fingernails, but you give it an impromptu manicure. It shouts at you with both mouths, but you shut it down with your one loud mouth. It gets into an argument about how to best attack you. Since neither head can say anything against brains, it's not a productive or quick argument. Wow, yeah. It hits. What is this joke? He headbutts you with both heads and both foreheads. All eight heads. I see. That's kind of dumb. All right, well, we ended the evil and the curb. So now there's just the 37 and the defiled nook left. All right. Skeleton bone, smart skull, and evil eye. Anyway, I allow the cat to uh, drink the milk out of my cereal when I'm done with it. Um, it's not a lot of milk, you know. It's just a little as a treat. Uh, which of these have I not done? Second one? Oh. Check behind the middle skull and you find another skull. Check behind that skull and find a little wooden box full of meat. Score. Party skeleton. But yeah, I don't want to, like, fatten my cat too much. All right, cool. Because, you know, 
You drop your severed flipper on your thigh, you lose one hit point. The skeleton burns your solar plexus with its cigarette. Story of life. We got a daiquiri. Cool. Margarita and loose teeth. Yeah, so I just give them little, you know, little licks. It's usually just like essentially a, it looks like a lot sometimes, but it's essentially usually just like only a teaspoon's worth of cow's milk. Um just spread across the entire bottom of a cereal bowl. And I have to try to eat when he eats breakfast because otherwise he will bug me for the milk. I'll be eating it and he'll come and be like, Hey, it's me, your cat. Can I have some? Have I done this already? We got a bone flute. These are real, you know. This is a flute made out of human femur. Sure, that's a little gross, but at least it isn't made of skin. F- out of skin. Yuck. It's a two-handed flute. It's a ranged weapon. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's a real thing. Uh. Sometimes people would just bore holes in bones to make flutes out of them. It's kind of screwed up, but uh, hey, you know. <laughs> The skeleton moves to attack you, but finds itself briefly immobilized by a ball and chain. It then spends a moment taking away the ball and chain. <laughs> oh, man, that's a joke my dad would get. Take away, take away, take away this ball and chain. Ah, oh, who is that? Ah, oh, who sings that song? Because the, the logo is a skeleton. That's the reference. You're fighting a giant skeleton. Skeleton. This is a huge skeleton that appears to have been constructed from the bones of three different skeletons, none of which was small. The guy glows with a spooky, spooky aura. It slashes you with multiple ulnas and several radiuses. Radii? Radishes? Wow, he's actually pretty tough. Bonk him. All right. As the skeleton collapses in a pile of bones, evil Omner emits a single loud beep. It's at 9999. The Hairt of the Curped. Hold on. I have to remember who sings that. Social D. Right. Yeah, my dad uh, owned a skateboard with uh, uh, the skeleton from Social D on the bottom. Actually, I wonder if I could find it. I just want to see. I'm getting more relaxed in my, in my, uh, such a discourse skateboard. Let me see here. I'm getting more and more relaxed with, uh, playing Kingdom of Loathing. Yeah, it was this one. My dad had a skateboard that looked just like this. Oh, Yeah. And then, yeah, Social Distortion has a song called Ball and Chain, and then that's the reference they made with, you know, the skeleton. (laughs) Oh, that's super cool. Man, blast from the past. Holy moly. All right. Hair to the Curped. The Hair to Darkness. In the middle of the Curped, there's a massive swirling blackness. A portal you surmise to the source of the curb's defilement. Ready to step through it and finish what you started when you started undefiling in here? When I... Yes? You're fighting the boner Dagon. <laughs> boner Dagon. <laughs> oh, that's super funny. As you enter the hair to the curb, you hear a squawking roar followed by a roaring squawk. This huge creature rises from a pile of bones, flaps its wings, and advances towards you. He spikes you in the arse with his bony wings. All right. Bam. As you're preparing to use that skill, the boner Dagon starts furiously beating its wings. You're knocked over by the gust it creates and lose track of what you're doing. He chomps in your throat with his great white fangs. You'd feel half as shy if he bit you again. Fumble. What's happening? You tempt to run away like a little coward, but you don't make it. He gores you in the stomach, 
chomps on the leg and whips you with his bony tail. The hits keep on coming. Can I bone saw him? <laughs> you attempt to remove some bones from your opponent, dealing 10 damage. In doing so, you bend the saw, rendering it useless. Stupid cheap bone saw. He whips you with his bony tail. You wish he wouldn't lash out like that. Oh, wow. This is super weird. You mess with the phylactery for a couple of seconds, but can't figure out how to get it open. He flaps his wings and rises higher in the air, roaring triumphantly. Then he snags a wing on the ceiling of the curb, breaks it off, and crashes to the ground. It digs his head a while to figure out which of the scattered bones on the floor are his. Huh. We got him. Okay, we got some. He gores you with his horns, then horns you with his gore. Oh, man. So he just makes you fumble and miss a lot by the looks of it. You somehow find the time to apply the cast to one of your broken limbs. Ah. Okay, he gored us again. Do we even have anything that we can do? This is... <gasps> we did it. We got the skull and chest of the boner Dagon. Go back to the curbed. It's empty. Ah, oh, yeah. All right, that's two done. Heck yeah. Let's go see what we got from him. Skull of the Boner Dagon. This is the skull that was once attached to the neck of the Boner Dagon. It's funny, it looks different now that it's detached. Plus five spook damage. All right. We got chest of the Boner Dagon, which is made of the ribs and the sternum of the Boner Dagon and probably contains goodies of the Boner Dagon. All right. You pry open the ribs and thus open the chest of the Boner Dagon. A strange myth pours forth from within it and goes into your nostrils. It smells bad and makes you feel pretty good. Whoa! You broke a hundred muscle. We're in triple digits now for a main stat. You're also able to bit, scrape quite a bit of meat from the east side of the ribs. Yeah. Oh, right. Using these was able to help me reduce the uh, the defilement. I, uh, I forgot that. <laughs> All right, let's look at the equipment. What do I have right now? Seven ball. Plus five meat from monsters. Okay, so I don't need that anymore. Okay, so I'm actually getting into a point where the food is... The food. Where the, <laughs> the game is getting a little bit more difficult again. So I am going to get a few more things going uh, in terms of stats. In terms of damage, I mean. Okay. Uh, council. Ah, so the spooky news was coming from this abominable creature, was it? We have our thanks, adventure, for your courageous act of undefilement. You have unfinished business with the trapper and the Highland Lord Black Angus. All right. I didn't even look at this thing. Orcish meat locker. Usable. Interesting. So I just wanted to go and check out there. Misc items. Try to open the meat locker, but you don't have the right key. Interesting. Um, so what am I where am I at right now? I'm at fifty five out of a hundred and 59 for my next muscle increase. All right. And I need six muscle before I'm at level 10. Cool. All right. Okay. 
do this. Pop one of these. One of these. One of these. And one out one of these. So all the beefy pill. We get beefy. Uh oh yeah, it's damage resistance resistance. Cool. Yeah, let's just stock up. Why not? You know? Alright. Um, I have no idea how to get a clown disguise, so I guess I'll do ooh, I can do Lady Spooky Ravens. Oh, actually, let's go look at the trapper. Trapper's cabin. John the Trapper. How do you look like a spry young varmint? There's dastardly dew on the foot of the mountain peak of the mountain, and it's making my right making it right hard to make a living in the trapping business. That's my business, by the way. Trapping, I mean. I'm a trapper. Name of John. A couple of days of mighty dumb fungal flower again. Before I knew it, my ski lift got knocked to pieces. To fix it, I'm gonna need some dag burned linoleum ore and corn sarn goat cheese. <laughs> you can get the cheese. You can get the cheese from the goats over yonder, and a bit yonder rural lies. <laughs> it's not yours, it's mine. It's not yours, it's mine. The dwarves over there aren't too friendly, so watch yourself. There's a goatlet, and it's not yours, it's mine. <laughs> You're fighting a saber-toothed goat. <laughs> this is a fearsome saber-toothed goat. He's fierce. But he's handy if you ever need a can of tomato juice opened and then eaten. Uh, I think that's a reference to Calvin and Hobbes. Um, they're at a museum, and Calvin's looking at saber tooth tigers, and he makes reference to how uh, you could put a can underneath a saber tooth tiger and hit him on the head and open the can. I love Calvin and Hobbes. Your opponent brushes off the hot, brushes against the hot plate and suffers four damage. Sizzle. He sharp. He gores you with his sharp horns. And a saber teeth simultaneously. It's like being attacked by some minotaur vampire hybrid. Oh, we crit him. Nice. You're fighting a drunk goat. This goat is drunk as a skunk. Which means it's considerably more drunk than a skunk who is drunk as a goat. <laughs> Another saber teeth goat. We got saber teeth. It is a one-handed knife. And it gives weapon damage plus four. Uh huh. Well, let's take a look at that. Okay, we've got one to eight to sixteen, and plus five damage. And then this is six to twelve, but plus four damage. Okay, so it's not as good, but whoa! Why did I never put this on? Oh, right, because I had to equip this for the disguise. All right. Um, hmm. Let me just check the uh, my squad. Oh, wait, not here. Yeah, Brotherhood of the Smackdown. And I am... Okay, I'm all capped out here. Um while I'm here oops sorry my uh yeah all right um my mouse is still out of batteries and or possibly broken um when I get batteries in, I've got a fun new idea for videos. But until then. Um, Matt McLarge, huge. Uh, this is a reference to MST3K. He tries to trash talk you, which is unusual for a goat. Doesn't upset you because he talks like diff. Thank goodness for speech impediments. You laugh until you're sure you've gotten the goat's goat. Yeah, that's that's also a reference to the Kevin Hobbs comic. Or strip, I should say. Puddle Puncher. Whoa. Trudging through the snow banks near the goatlet, you're comforted by a sense of familiarity. You used to trudge through snow banks all the time back in the frigid Northlands. As you crest a hill, you're confronted with another familiar sensation, this one less comforting, the dark presence of an infernal seal. As you investigate the area, searching for the source of the dark energy, your search leads you to a frozen puddle. 
You gaze through the ice and see two tiny eyes glowing in the depths. It's a surprisingly deep puddle. puddle. Angered, you punch through the ice and grab the ice. Uh, the thing is the ice we're attached to, which is a figurine of an infernal seal. Cold seal. It's cold to the touch, like some kind of funky Medina. And it's a seal clubber only. Huh. Interesting. Okay. God, I've got so many of these. Okay, cold seal. It does not have a required level. Okay, let's warm myself up on one of these. Okay. Okay. Oh, Desmond got a pound. Cool. Okay. Oh, Lord. Can you hear that? Yeah, you might be able to hear that. Someone's uh, mowing the yard outside. That's rather irritating. We got another one. Hmm. You're fighting a dairy goat. Insert a pun on utterly and utterly here. If you're the kind of guy that doesn't get punched in the face enough. You make fun of her goatee so she hooves you in the nipple. You lose four hit points. You make fun of her goatee so she hooves you in the solar plexus. We got goat cheese, one of three. All right. Jeez, there's a lot of these. She squirts goat milk into your eye. Ick, ow, ugh, arg. Two hit points for sleaze damage. Another goat cheese. All right. Drunk goat. He starts to headbutt you, but halfway there, he collapses to the ground and starts snoring. You wish he had a pen with you so you could write hilariously obscene words all over him. <laughs> nice. Dang, they give me a lot of these. Are they, like, easy? Because I got four now. You need in one, one imbued seal blubber candle. What? Huh. Well... Imbued seal blubber candle. Oops, sorry. I just knocked my mic. Powdered seal blown and regular candles. It's a greater infernal seal. How do I get powdered seal bone? Obtained from hermetic seals. Where do hermetic seals show up? What the heck? It's... An ancient seal figurine. From the Hermitage. Huh. How can I... Actually, I'm right near the Hermitage. Okay. Mammoth well, large, huge. Hermitage, here we go. Figurine of an ancient seal. There it is. Huh. So how do I use the hermitage? Who will trade your worthless trinkets, gigaws, and knickknacks? It's a knick. Oh, it just. It's just a thing. Okay. <laughs> Huh. Worthless trinkets. Yeah, I haven't even been to Hobopolis yet. Huh, okay. So I'm not technically supposed to have imbued seal candles yet. Interesting. Bloody hand. 
Interesting. Okay. Well, let's go. Of course, I've now already forgot where I was supposed to go. Market Square. General Store. Chewing gum on a string. Hey, why not? You got 70 chewing gums on strings. This is a wad of chewing gum at the end of a long string. It would be perfect for fishing things out of a sewer. <laughs> you find a nearby sewer grating and fish around with it with a gum. You pull it back up. In addition to a decent amount of filth, it's got an item stuck to it. You repeat the process 59 more times. We got four disco balls. Three turtle totems, four saucepans, two pasta spoons, two turtle helmets, three worthless geek gauze, uh, two soul skill helmets. Oh, these are the generic. These are the default items, I think. Um, five mariachi hats, five disco, four disco masks, six stolen accordions, two pairs of sweatpants, seven worthless knickknacks, two ravioli hats, five silk clubbing clubs, and three worthless trinkets. All right. Now to the Hermitage. Oh, right. I never got the Hermit permit. I totally forgot. Marche Square. Let me see here. Is it in here? Hermit permit. Baboombo. And you know what? Yeah, let's just get 50, you know? All right, you repeat the process another 60 times. <laughs> All right. Um, another four disco balls, turtle totems, seal skull hats, worthless trinkets, saucepans, gee gauze, spoons, sweatpants, knickknacks, ravioli hats, seal clubbing club, mariachi hats, turtles, holidays helmet, disco masks, and accordions. All right, so let's look at what we've actually got right now. We've got 10 disco masks, seven holidays helmets, <laughs> six turtle helms. <laughs> <laughs> mariachi hats oh yeah ravioli hats oh man <laughs> oh man oh man oh man all right um cool let's uh let's go get a The hermit rummages through your sack, and his eyes light up at the sight of your filthy, worthless drink of your worthless trinkets. He leads you deeper into the cave and points at a collection of items set on a carpet. Okay, so let's get. Can we get how many of these? Yeah, let's get a seal tooth, volleyball. Yes, I did cheat and read the wiki. You know, let's just get four of these, just because that's all he has. Um, hmm. Dang. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. The figure of an ancient seal. You place the figure in your feet and place three candles. All right, let's go. You're finding a hermetic seal. You light the candles and speak the ancient words. A cloud of dust rises around you and there's a dry coughing sound as a wild-eyed ancient seal appears. He glares at you, coughs a few times, and waddles at you with a surprising vigor. Ooh. He bonks you on the elbow with a cane. Should have stayed off his lawn. You lose 39 hit points. He bonks you on the leg with a cane. Should have stayed off his lawn. Wow. Holy moly. Oh, man. Wow, it takes three whole crits 
Down bones, down bones, then dry bones. This is what it looks like when they get so dry, they disagree completely. And when they were from a seal. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's go to crafting. Seal blub candle. Powdered sealman. Imbued seal blub candle. Okay. Uh, I'm going to rest because I burnt a lot of stuff there. The bright face of Grimace smiles on you. Nice. Cool. Um, oh, actually, that reminds me. Oh, jeez, I've got so many of these. What do these do? Disassembled clover. Huh. Okay. Hmm. All right. Intriguing. Oh, I got the seal tooth. Okay. Can't think of anything useful to do with the seal tooth, so you poke yourself in the finger. It hurts a lot, and your finger doesn't work as well afterwards. Uh, and then I cheated because I read that one thing. Volleyball. You smack the volleyball and smear the blood on your hand onto it. Blood stain looks like a face, so you quickly draw an eye, nose, and a mouth before the blood dries. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know if anyone heard that. Put in terrarium. You name him Gravselt. Gravselt. Icky sporting goods. Spiritual and has obvious pairing. Gives you more stats after combat. Yo! That's radical. I do think I am going to take Desmond, though. Because right now I need health. I don't need it, but I want health. Alright. Um, we got a goat beard. This is the female goat that pretends to be the wife of the male goat, so no one discovers the male goat's true sexual orientation. <laughs> nah, not really. It's just a tuft of hair from the goat's chin. A goatee, if you will. It's a hat. <laughs> that's really funny. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> Tennessee whiskey. All right. I just want to get the... The last little thing. Another goat beard. Um, I'll sell all this stuff that I don't need off screen. Okay. Actually, you know what? So I've got all my fury back up. My health is full. I'm going to end the... I'm going to... Oh my. Let me go here. Okay. No, no, I can't take any more of those for a while. Tainted seal's blood. Hand shock. Okay. Bengal Balm. Oh, man. You're the Bengal Balm on your pecs, delts, glutes, and your Gilead. Go get him, tiger. Okay. Let's do this. Position an embrued blubber candle in front of it. You're fighting a Navy SEAL. What's a Navy SEAL? <laughs> You light the candle and speak the ancient words. The air takes an arctic chill and the sky darkens. A blast of cold wind greets you as a massive bulk pops into existence in front of you. It's a Navy SEAL, an elite assassin in the army, armada of the infernal abyss. 
bred for survival in the icy waters of the frigid north. It radiates cold the way the way a radiator radiates the opposite of cold. It expert train its expert combat training kicks in as soon as you hit the ground and rushes you. You get the jump on them. Wallop. Whoa. Okay, so what did we even hit him for? We hit him for 84 damage. He hit us for 62 damage. That's extreme. It sneaks up behind you and chokes you with its powerful thin. You'd go unconscious, but the ice cold keeps you awake. Whoa. It slaps you with a frigid fin. The alliteration hurts as, nearly as much as the cold. Um, can we stun him? Monster defense reduced by five. We got a little health back. I can't take another one of those. Oh, man. Okay. Maybe. <gasps> oh, oh, man. That was really dangerous. You seize, you seize with fury as your taut, sinewy arms tense up in preparation for a massive attack. Whoa. It didn't give me anything. Didn't it? <laughs> oh, well. Uh, wow, we kill we we kicked another seal's butt. That was pretty rad. That was pretty rad, actually. Um, that's a pretty good episode of Kingdom of Loathing. I didn't think it was gonna go for that long, but I totally did. Uh, thanks for coming by. I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I still am. I love this game. I'm really happy that I uh, fought two new seals today. I know my uh, wife's gonna be very happy about that as well. Uh, she likes seeing about all the seals. All right. Um, I've been Alfred. Thanks for coming by. I will see you guys next time.